Once again, we extend a heartfelt greetings to all our esteemed guests joining us from various corners of the globe for yet another thrilling seminar. It's our great pleasure to welcome you all to the 10th seminar in the third edition of the seminar series on the digital future for business and society, emerging perspective on the metaverse. I, Dr. Vinod Kumar from Symbiosis Institute of Business Management, Pune, and Dr. Annabel Kittires from University of London are truly honored and privileged to lead this exciting event as moderators. This seminar series is hosted jointly by Professor Yogesh Kumar Devedi, who is Professor of Digital Marketing and Innovations and Founding Director of the Digital Future for Business and Society Research Group at School of Management, Swansea University, Wales, UK. Next, we have Dr. Laurie Hughes. He is Senior Lecturer within Strategic Operation Group and Founding Member of the Digital Future for Sustainable Business and Society Research Group at School of Management, Swansea University, Wales, UK. And we also have Professor Ramakrishnan Raman. He is currently Director, Symbiosis Institute of Business Management, Pune. Dean, Faculty of Management, Symbiosis International Deemed University. Director, Strategy and Development, Symbiosis Group. Our entire seminar series is jointly supported by Digital Marketing and Analytics SIG Academy of Marketing, Green Nobel IAE Graduate School of Management, a Green Nobel INP School of the University of Green Nobel Alps, the E-Business and E-Government SIG British Academy of Management, the UK Academy for Information System UK AIS. Now, I would like to share very briefly about the seminar series. Emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, blockchain, Internet of Things and the Metaverse undoubtedly offer transformative potential for the augmentation and potential replacement of human performed tasks and activities within a wide range of industrial, intellectual and social applications. The impact and widespread adoption of these technologies is likely to be transformational within sectors ranging from agriculture, finance, healthcare, manufacturing, retail, supply chain, logistics, and utilities. The seminar series on the digital future for business and society, Emerging Perspective on the Metaverse, will present various perspectives from a number of leading expert speakers to highlight the opportunities and challenges posed by the rapid emergence of the metaverse. The seminar series will not only offer a timely and thought-provoking insight to the metaverse, but also its impact on the future of business, management, and societal factors impacted by growth, direction, and widespread adoption of this new immersive technology. Today, we are incredibly fortunate to have the esteemed presence of Professor Emmanuel Mughaji, an eminent researcher who will grace the event with his insights on the topic, advertising and media planning on the metaverse, a theoretical primer for advertising research and practice. To tell you something about our speaker, Professor Emmanuel Mogaji is an Associate Professor in Marketing at Kiel Business School, Kiel University, UK. His research interest lies in ABCDE of marketing, that's quite interesting, advertising, branding, communication, digital and ethics with a specific interest in transportation, education and financial services. He has published peer-reviewed journal articles, edited special issues and books and presented his work at many national and international platforms. His co-authored editorial introduced the concept of immersive time, which is described as conscious, deliberate and dedicated time spent using a headset and other accessories to continually engage in the metaverse. His publication have appeared in International Journal of Information Management, Industrial Marketing Management, Technological Forecasting and Social Change, European Journal of Marketing, Journal of Consumer Behavior, Journal of Service Marketing, and many more. His research on financial services marketing has won the Emerald Literary Award. He is author of many textbooks, including Brand Management, published by Pulgrave, Introduction to Advertising, and Digital Consumer Management, both published by Protledge. He has also co-edited 12 books on higher education, green, and fashion marketing. A very warm welcome to you, Professor Mogaji. Without any further ado, I would kindly request you to take over and address our esteemed audience for today. Over to you, Professor Mogaji. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Okay, yeah, so let me share my screen. Okay, so here we are. 
We can see your screen. Okay, I want to put it in. Okay, yes. Uh, thank you so much for, for having me. It's a pleasure to join this uh, seminar series. Uh, this is the 10th one. I guess I want to see that as a special, as a special number. And it's, it's a pleasure to share this platform with many other eminent, eminent scholars that have exploited uh, Metaverse and also for us to uh, think about the impact on research and practice. I'm so much grateful for this type of initiative. Uh, uh, and I think it's something commendable to because it brings uh, academics and practitioners to discuss this uh, in a very more engaging and interactive section. So this is even looking beyond uh, the structured academic publications, but making it very interactive uh, and engaging. So my focus today will be on media planning. Uh, advertising and also to discuss this in the context of advertising research and practice. So a bit about myself, um, um, I do research and I teach advertising and I teach media planning. And this is an area that I've been exploring when it comes to, to the metaverse. And it's important for us to recognize that metaverse is now the big buzzword, is that, is that uh, trending uh, emerging technology. Uh, is the new place to be. Uh, we also recognize that it is changing our business operations with many brands going onto the metaverse, creating their own spaces. And there are these uh, possibilities for interaction whereby, whereby we see brand advertisements. So often for me to, to sort of discuss what metaverse is, you want to see it as that digital world. So what are those things that we are doing in the real world and what are those things that can be transferred into the virtual world? And this is one of the good things about Metaverse because it can be applied in, in many, many areas. And it's just left for everybody to critically evaluate how they want to explore Metaverse. So either in fashion, in sports, in entertainment, in banking. And this is something that we've, we've recognized. And also when it comes to research, academic has been exploring this topic. Uh, we've got uh, many opinion pieces, uh, research articles, contemporary uh, uh, topics that are exploring what metaverse is uh, in terms of uh, marketing and to really give us that uh, better understanding of what we, what we will expect. And this is something that I have also done in our paper with uh, uh, in the International Journal of Information Management whereby we introduce the concept of immersive time. Uh, this is where we recognize that there is the need for brands and developers to engage with the consumers. So where does it start? The developer has provided a platform that has that is being developed so that you have brands coming on board and also consumers coming on board. So this builds up on the idea of let's say social media, whereby Facebook has created the platform you have brands coming on social media and they're expecting you to follow them. So consumers will also be expected to engage with brands on their social media. And this is something that, like as I said earlier on, you can transfer this into the digital world saying, you've got uh, a space in the virtual world whereby you've got brands creating their own real estate, creating their own offices, creating a digital twin of their shop. And also they expect consumers to to come on board and engage with them. And in this, we recognize that there are different levels of relationship uh, between the consumers and the brand, uh, between the consumers and the developers, and also even the brands with the developers. This is where we sort of conceptualize that idea of immersive time. That is, when you are on in the metaverse, what are you really doing? How are you spending your time? So this builds up on what has been done with Web 2.0, whereby people go to social media. What do we do on social media? And then we want to think about the metaverse. This metaverse has provided a platform for the brand to present their own digital twin and for consumers as well to come and engage. But we want to recognize that there are enormous challenges when it comes to how far uh, people can really engage on the metaverse. And this is something that we recognize, and I think everybody around the world recognizes it as well, 
because they might think there is this hype about metaverse. Everybody's talking about metaverse as it got a future. I guess that is what many people also said when the internet was coming out, uh, web, web, web 2.0, when everybody was having a website. I remember seeing a newspaper article in 2022 uh, in Evening Standard in, I think, year 2000, when people were doubting that, yes, uh, don't worry, we won't be shopping online. We will still prefer to go to a shop. But look at 2023. How many people still go to the ice street to shop? Many people are shopping online. So the point is, we don't know what it will look like in, in 2035. But with, this, with the development and the investment so far, there is that prospect that, yes, things are about to happen. And it's important for us to recognize that there are many aspects to this metaverse. But today's presentation is about advertising in the metaverse. And what does this advertising is? Basically, advertising is about you presenting your message for your, for your consumers to see. So I go on social media, I post my products, consumers sit on social media, they want to buy from me. I go on the high street, I put my advert, I put it on the billboard, people see they want to engage with me. And the focus on metaverse has often been on that user seamless interaction with the real and simulated environment. But there is uh, the need for us to recognize the crucial role of media planning and buying. So when we talk about advertising, we might be thinking about the creative uh, thought process that goes into designing that advert, saying, okay, we will put a model, we will use a music, we will use this color, we will arrange it this way, the copy we are going to use, the text we are going to use, how do we edit this, okay, all well and good. But where would you place this advert? So this is where the media planning and buying comes for you to know that, okay, my product should be coming out in December. So therefore I need to have enough space to put this advert. And this is something I was trying to conceptualize when it comes to advertising in the metaverse saying, is it possible for us to replicate what we have in the real world into the metaverse? Saying we had advertisements in the world, in the real world, is it possible for us to transfer that into the metaverse? So think about social media shaping advertising practices. As uh, how about the potential for metaverse? Social media has provided that meeting point for brand and consumers to engage. It has offered the media placement and metrics to measure engagement. And also social media has provided that platform for innovative solutions and with this growing quest for immersive time in the metaverse, there is need for us to start exploring advertising in the metaverse. The amount of people going into the metaverse to exploit, to see what is going on, the amount of people that are developing ideas and developing technology, the number of investments from the tech developers from Facebook to Apple to encourage us to go to, to, onto the metaverse, this is something that it's important for us to recognize. I have been into the metaverse, I've looked around, and I thought, you know what, it's important for us to recognize that, especially when you talk about digital out of homes. So the media in the context of this presentation is where we can display our adverts with a specific focus on the digital out of homes, which include billboards and media walls. So that means if you are wearing your headset, you are going into metaverse, you'll be seeing some buildings and you have your activities, but the point is there are a lot of platforms out there for us to interact and for us to engage and for us to know what is going on. And this is something I'm thinking about. So looking at this image, yes, there are many walls there. There are many billboards. There are possibilities of billboard and there are possibilities of brand putting the advert there. So this is something that has been done with games whereby you can have adverts that are being relayed real life in the game. And again, you can have these different adverts for different players. So this is a technology that is ongoing and it's important for us to therefore explore it uh, when it comes to metaverse. But I guess a caveat here is media planners will always need the numbers. And I guess this is something I'm recognizing and I'm acknowledging that yes, the numbers might not be there now. We might just be seeing three people in the metaverse. Brand will be asking you, 
why should I come and put my advert in the metaverse when it's just only three? But like I said, who knows what will happen in many years to come? And this is where we are sort of presenting this as an idea that can be conceptualized. And looking at this, is this something that could be possible? Will metaverse be filled with different spaces for adverts whereby you can interact and engage? Again, this could depend on the type of product. So if you are selling a fashion, if you are a fashion brand, you might want to advertise the whereby the person see the, person see the advert, they might want to buy the dress, have it as NFT. But if you have Coca-Cola, we can't be drinking Coca-Cola in the metaverse. How do you use that? Or if you're a chocolate brand, I guess these are some of those things to recognize. But again, like I said at the beginning, this is a, this is a seminar, it's a workshop for us to show these ideas, to discuss it and reflect on the possibilities. So I'm open to questions. Please remember to put them in the chat if you have any idea as I go on with the presentation. So the aim here is to recognize the various stakeholders that influence media planning and buying in the metaverse, to identify significant opportunities and challenges in managing the media spaces in the metaverse. And thirdly, which is very important, to present some practical recommendations for these stakeholders on how to advertise and for media planning strategies in the metaverse. So those are the three key aims that I want to achieve with this presentation. To let us know the key stakeholders that have proposed when it comes to media planning in the metaverse, to recognize the opportunities and challenges, and also to think about some practical recommendations. So this study adopts an integrated literature review approach to critical review and synthesizes literature. So this is where I've been able to look at what other studies have said about advertising, about media planning, about metaverse, about digital out of homes, about social media, and to sort of conceptualize and present to you a concept that introduces the possibilities of advertising in the metaverse. So this is a conceptual framework, which we will be discussing. I will share with you, discuss the whole key stakeholders and we can talk about it. So we have the metaverse right in the middle and the key thing here is the consumers that are on the metaverse. So I guess those two are very clear, but this metaverse is supported by the developers who are helping to create this technology, helping to create this virtual environment. So think about having a website. You have a website, but you are more likely to have a website developer to help you to develop the website, put it online for people to see. So with that understanding also, you have the metaverse, which is the virtual world is just out there. But we recognize many developers that are working on this. So we see them behind the scene, supporting this metaverse with different innovations. And also we've got the media owners. So media owners in this case will be, let's say JC D. Cox or let's say Claire Channel or even ITV or CNN. So these media owners are those people or organizations that have media spaces whereby you can put your adverts. So that means if I go on the high street in London, I can see a Claire Channel billboard. I can call Claire Channel saying, I saw your billboard and I want to put my advert on it. That is the media owner. They own the place. I go to ITV, I want to advertise on ITV, how much will it cost me? I go to Facebook, I want to advertise on Facebook, how much will it cost me? I go to X, I want to advertise, how much will it cost me? So those are the media owners. And also we recognize the media planner. So when it comes to this framework, so the media planners are those who work with the brand to also work with the media owners. So you see them as within an advertising agency. Again, this could be a freelancer who knows the billboard owner, who knows the brand. So you see the media planner as that real estate agent. This media planner knows the landlord. He also knows the tenant. So it brings the tenant and the landlord together. The media owner is the landlord who owns the space. The brand is the tenant who wants to put their message on the billboard for people to see. But it is important for, for us to recognize the metrics and measurements here. The brand will be asking the media planner, why should I advertise on ITV? How many people are watching TV in this case? Why should I advertise on CNN? Oh, media planner will tell you, don't worry, CNN has got a global coverage, they will do this, they will do that. So here we recognize metrics and measurements because that is what the media owner will need to sort of justify why they wanted to put their adverts in their house. 
in their space. That is also what the brand we need to justify why they need to go to that particular brand, to that particular media. Why are, not, why are people advertising on maybe social media? Because we recognize that you can measure it, you can see how people are, are engaging with your advert, so you've got the metrics there. And when it comes uh, down there, so if you see the real world contains the media owners, the planners, and the brand, and the consumers. But when we come to the simulated environments, this is where I am proposing the idea of digital billboards on the metaverse. So this is where you have spaces that you can interpolate or integrate or deposit a, a, a media message or an advertisement on that billboard. But again, who will own this billboard? Are we talking about individuals who have created their space in the metaverse? Are we talking about developers who are creating the metaverse? But also there is the possibility of those who own media in the real life to also own that same media in a simulated environment. Another key factor I want to introduce here, key stakeholder here is the metaverse marketing agency. So take your mind back maybe 20 years ago when there was uh, social media and you had agency coming out saying, we are a digital marketing agency saying, we only help you to put your message out there on social media. So these guys are different from a typical WPP network agency, whereby you have businesses coming out saying, we only focus on digital media. And this is something I'm proposing that yes, is going to shape the industry when you have metaverse marketing agencies, whereby these are marketing agencies that are solely focusing on metaverse, saying, we help you to put your message on the metaverse to see. We might think it's not going to be a very big industry, but who knows what the future lies with the metaverse. And this is why we can always take our mind back to what life was with, with social media. When some people were doubting that, yes, it would not grow. But now we have agencies that are solely focusing on social media, internet, digital marketing. And this is something that, yes, we need to recognize. So this conceptual framework relates, uh, sort of explain the different connections. And when it comes to brand, you have some brands who are actually already on the metaverse. So the fashion brands, most of them are creating something on the metaverse. You have some banks creating something on the metaverse. You have some car companies creating something on metaverse. Even Manchester, Manchester City have worked with Sony to create sort of a, a virtual stadium in the metaverse. So again, you have those kind of brands that are already on the metaverse, but you also have some brands that are not on the metaverse, but they are exploring it. So for example, I've got a small fashion brand. How would I go into the metaverse? Do I need to partner with Roblox and make sure those characters are wearing my dresses, but I don't really want to invest on that? Do I need to start creating my dresses in 3D and send it to Roblox again? You have some brands contemplating that. But this framework actually helps us to understand the working relationship between all of them. So who are the stakeholders? We've talked about the media owners. Those are the guys that own the space whereby you can put your adverts. You've got the media planners. These are the guys that knows the media owners that has got spaces and they know brands that want to put their message on the space. We've got the brands. These are brands that want to engage with consumers. They want to tell the world, we've got a new product, come and buy from us. We've also got the consumers. Those are the enthusiasts, those who are interested. They wear their glasses, they wear their, their headsets, going to Metaverse. They go on to their computer, they go on to Metaverse. So again, these are the consumers. And also we recognize the developers who are working behind the scene to make sure that yes, there is uh, the, the necessary infrastructure to support how this uh, works. So again, this is just to introduce what it looks like. So we recognize the media owner, the brand, the consumer, media planners and developers. So when we talk about the stakeholders, it's important to recognize that Metaverse has opened a vast opportunity for brands to engage with consumers and then ultimately advertise their product and services because why would you just go into the metaverse and just be engaging without using that as a medium to also integrate your brand, to also use that to tell the people that, yes, this is what we do, this is what you sell. And also 
The role of the media planner in engaging with the brand is evolving as the marketing agencies focusing on metaverse are now proposing their own innovative marketing services to brand. So this is where a brand would think about it. Should I just go and work with an advertising agency or should I go and work with a metaverse marketing agency? So this is where you decide saying, okay, I want to, I want to get on the metaverse. Do I expect uh, a, a, an, a, a normal advertising agency to have the expertise to take me to the metaverse or do I purposely look out for a metaverse marketing agency? I thought the quality and quantity of the digital billboard on the metaverse is bound to change because this is where you see brands saying, we want to put our message out there for people to see. So as they walk around in the metaverse, they see our product, they can click on it, and then that can take them to a place. They can engage with it, give them some information about what we do. So this metaverse provides additional layer for our brand engagement in terms of digital billboard and messaging on the, on the metaverse. So what are the implications? This is something that I would like to sort of emphasize and to really think about it moving on from here, because we are not just talking about this maybe from an academic point of view, but this is where we want to recognize the real implications of what is going on, especially for advertising agencies and media planners. Like I said, if you want to go into the metaverse, okay, as a company, you've been hearing a lot of people saying, oh, metaverse is this, metaverse is that, and you want to go into the metaverse, who would you likely engage with? An advertising agency or a purpose-built uh, metaverse marketing agency? But this also presents that extra challenge for agencies to see. Perhaps they need to start exploring options of offering advertising services in the metaverse for their clients. So you've got a client, maybe 20 years ago, they were just advertising on billboard. You tell them, guys, you know what? You can advertise on this thing, it's called social media. It's new, you know, you just put it online, people will see. Then they get on board. Now it's time perhaps for advertising agencies to start exploring that opportunity to say, okay, Unilever, you are already in our account. We work with you. We've worked with you from the age of newspaper, billboards to TV, to social media. Now, there is something called metaverse. Some a little people, a few number of people are going there. You might want to explore it. So this is a, a significant implications for, for the advertising agency. But ultimately it's about their capability to deliver. Have they got the resources? Have they got the technical know-how to really do these things? And secondly, is about the media owner. Now they have the opportunities to tap into this new market to this new market to reach a new audience and increase their earning powers. So for example, we've got the JC D. Cox and the Claire Channels who owns Outdoor. So these guys are very popular. You will have seen them everywhere around the world. They have the billboard, you will see their name down there. What's the possibility of them now moving into the digital space, into metaverse and having their own billboard? So that means they have started to create their own uh, real estate saying, we have a billboard in the real world in London, then we can also give you a billboard in the metaverse. So that means we can do a deal for you. Advertise with us in the real world and also advertise with us in the metaverse. But again, this is also about the, cap the, the technical capabilities to, to deliver this. But the good side is this information can be tracked. You can know who is coming on board. You can actually see how well they're engaging with it because you can actually see who is seeing this advert, who is looking at it, who is engaging with it. And this offers some compelling insight and analytics that will be useful for the brand. Also, the brand needs to start thinking about, about advertising in the metaverse, yes. So we might say that yes, metaverse is dull, it's not that popular, not many people are going on it. Yes, that is a known fact. But this is a new technology. This is something that is bound to grow and it's important for brands to start exploring it. To think about what the future we hold. You have fashion brands, financial services, banks, retail, many people going on to the metaverse. So think about what happened many years ago. Everybody was, going on to, was having their own websites. 
I'm sure you will have some companies who will tell you, no, we don't need a website. We'll be fine without having a website. Who goes to website to buy something? No, we don't need a website. But fast forward now, if a business doesn't have a website, they're not taken serious. So who knows what the future will be? Because with a lot of investment that is going into this metaverse in terms of the technology, this is where we recognize that, yes, there are huge prospects for brand to exploit. And when it comes to brand, we might recognize that it depends on the level of, it depends on the types of brand, yes. Depends on their financial capabilities, depends on the type of product they sell. Would you expect somebody who sells, maybe, would you expect a fishmonger to go on the metaverse? Again, maybe not. Would you expect uh, somebody who sells flour to go on the metaverse? Maybe not. But how about a fashion brand? How about a sport brand? Yes, these are some of those things that we need to recognize because this presents the need for them for brand to expand beyond just the real world and to engage with many other prospective stakeholders out there. Yes, again, this is where the partnership comes, comes in with those who already have their digital space and also those who are trying to sort of sell their spaces for them to perhaps get additional income. So for brands who are not existing on Metaverse, they might start to think about, about having that space. This is why I talk about partnership. So if, for example, I've designed my own real estate, my own virtual space in the Metaverse, can I partner with an organization to put their message on my own space in the virtual world? So for example, if you own, if you design like a shopping mall in the Metaverse, you expect people to come in and just look around. In the, in, the, in the shopping mall there, could you be able to accommodate different brands that just want to test? They just want to see maybe a trial version saying, I don't have the resources or the interest to invest in this technology. Just give me a trial version. Let me see what it looks like. And this is where the tech developers comes in, whereby we recognize that yes, there are a lot of opportunities for developers to, to support brands who are coming onto Metaverse. So remember, this is not just a one-man business. This is everybody coming together to create that place. It's so infinite, everybody has got their own little corner to do something. And as tech developers, either to even support the big brand, but even smaller brands that might be contemplating or uh, sort of exploring the time exploring the opportunities and see what it feels like to have their brand in the metaverse. Again, this is something that will depend on the type of brand, if they have the interest, if it aligns with their values, if it aligns with what they really want to do. And here you can also recognize that yes, many brands are doing it. So this is something that could be considered, but again, ultimately, it will depend on the type of brand, their resources, and if that aligns with their value. But beyond this social interaction that we have on, on, on Metaverse, uh, there's also huge opportunities for monetization on the platform. So this is where we think about what social influencers has done with social media. When social media was started, nobody will start thinking of somebody just doing this and using that to get money. Nobody would think about somebody creating a content and you want to monetize. People just think social media will be a place to put your things and engage with your friends and family. But 20 years later, the definition of social media has changed. Monetization has come in. Even see what Twitter is doing, X is doing. Monetization has come in whereby you sort of engage with the consumers, with the users, to also give them reasons to come onto the platform. And this is something that I propose that here will be very relevant going forward when we see how metaverse can be monetized, how metaverse can be, can be an additional source of income for people. So if I've created my space on the metaverse and I see a lot of people, a lot of footfall coming into my space, coming to my own real estate, coming to my virtual world, I can use that metrics to reach out to brand saying, I've got about 1000 people every day visiting my space in the metaverse. Would you be interested in putting an advert here? Would you be interested in putting a design here? So at least when people see they can click on you, they can know more about your brand. So beyond just the fact that we are going on social media to love and to engage and have meetings and interact, there is this 
possibilities for monetization on the platform. It might be small now, but this is just for us to recognize the huge prospect that abounds in it. And considering that metaverse is an emerging technology area, academic researchers have got significant roles in providing that much needed theoretical information. So credit to uh, Yogesh and the team who has been working on providing different uh, uh, opinion papers, joint uh, articles to explore this metaverse from different perspectives. Because this is not just uh, uh, a tunnel vision. This is not just marketing a metaverse. This is something that we need to recognize. It's very encompassing, even coming with policymakers, regulators, to the developers, to how consumers use it, even our health and well being. So these are some of those things that academic researchers need to explore to know that, yes, we don't really know much about this. And there's this need for us to research more and to explore more. Perhaps beyond just the, the, the opinion pieces and the, and the articles that has been written, to start working on some practical uh, research and also collecting some empirical data to understand how people engage with the metaverse, to conceptualize, to measure that immersive time. How long are people, how much time do people spend on the metaverse? What are they doing? How are they engaging there? How can we make their time better over there? What are the risks of, of engaging the metaverse? What are the dark sides? And there's need for more that, for that research about the customers and the brand perspective. For consumers to understand, why do I need to go to metaverse? What are my challenges? Why am I here? What is going on? And also for brand to reflect, why do we need to go into metaverse? Are we just jumping on this bandwagon? Do we need to go on it or we just need to stay calm? But on the other side, I will challenge brands to almost also reflect on what happened to many brands when you had the web 2.0, when everybody was going online, everybody was thinking about digital, thinking about apps, thinking about websites. Some brands kept quiet saying, no, we don't need it. So who knows what metaverse will look like? Web, uh, it's, it's, it's something that we need to have on that horizon to see. Yes, there are these opportunities. How can we be prepared to go for it? So there's also the need to understand the media planners and the advertising strategies. Are they really keen on it? What are their challenges? What are they doing? What are their struggles in, in convincing brands to come on the metaverse? And also to recognize that, yes, there is this new trend around the metaverse marketing agencies, whereby you have dedicated agencies that are solely focusing on taking brand from the real world into the virtual world. And how would this affect businesses? And how will we affect uh, uh, companies? So something to look out for, the metaverse marketing agencies. Yes, that is something I believe could be changing very soon, whereby we have uh, agencies that are saying, you know what, we have moved past digital marketing, we have moved past social media, now we are going into the metaverse, yes. So as I bring this uh, to conclusion, so this uh, study sort of uh, builds on uh, the impact of metaverse on, on media planning, embedding the interactive advertising model, and also to recognize the multidisciplinary perspective on, on metaverse that has been discussed. So this present that conceptual framework highlighting some challenges and prospects. So challenges could be the numbers, the metrics, the measurement. How would you know people are here? What evidence would you have for me to be convinced that I should come and advertise on the metaverse? And also the prospects, that is a double deal. You get your advert in the real world. You can also get it in the metaverse. You have additional platform to engage with your, with your, with your consumers and your target audience. So we put forward the research agenda, yes, for ex exploring this, uh, exploiting the full potential of both advertising practitioners and brands to see what can they do. So that will be all for now. Thank you so much for your time. Yes, I will be open to questions and for us to discuss about it. And if you have any comments, if you have any questions, yes, uh, let's talk about it. This is not a class. This is meant to be a session for us to discuss what do you think could go wrong what do you think would be very good about this? Thank you so much. I look forward to your questions.
Thank you so much, uh, Professor Mogaji. Uh, it was a wonderful session and quite interesting to see, you know, uh, who are the stakeholders which will be getting impacted with the you know metaverse advertisement. And uh, uh, before we take questions, I I would like to ask you <laughs> how uh, this consumer journey right will look like in metaverse. Do we have sufficient touch points uh, that will be uh, you know, or it will only be reinforcement that will be done uh, like other media touch points that already brands are using. So metaverse will be just reinforcement of the same. So how do you visualize that consumer journey in the metaverse? Oh, thank you so much. I like that. So how do you, I, I do I visualize it? So this is Emmanuel's vision. So this is not something that, yes, it's, it's, it's out there. So for me, I think we need to recognize the challenges with getting onto the metaverse which is going to be that, that, which is still the main issue when it comes to that touch point. And when you see in my conceptual framework, I also sort of separate it from the real world to the simulated environment. So this will depend on the, the capabilities of the brand to see if they can track that journey, even up to the metaverse. Because that is also that, that uh, so far from my experience, that is still lacking in terms of that bridge. So this is not like a normal website I can say, oh, you type into www.q.ac.uk, you go to our website. So we can track you going to the Met. You can, we can track you going there. So this is something that brands need to start thinking about. And this is where the, the developers and the, mark, the metaverse marketing agencies will come in to help brands to sort of streamline that experience in terms of measuring or understanding the consumer journey. So often people just wear that, they log in and they go to the metaverse. So it's about recognizing that connection with what people are doing in the metaverse and also what they can be doing in the real world. So, so far, I think it will be possible going forward for us to have that uh, customer or to understand that customer journey. But like I said, it's still an evolving uh, emerging area. So most people just go there to have their phone come out. But who knows as we go on, and with, the developers, with developers investing more resources and technologies and with the, with the marketing agencies getting more creative, this is something I feel that we can track if people go from our virtual environment to the real world and if they can even come back from our real world back to us. So I'll quickly give you a good example. Think about charity organization. If I see a charity organization in the metaverse, will I be prone to, to give them money in the real world. So again, this is, so this is not just a brand saying, I want to buy your product, but this, this charity organization needs money in the, in the real world. Right. Can they transfer the money from the metaverse into the real world? So these are some of those areas that are evolving, but I'm sure as with any technology, we are going to overcome it. We are going to have that seamless experience whereby you can, you can deposit money through your NFT, Cryptocurrencies in metaverse, you can have it in your bank account, withdraw it at the ATM. So that's something basic. That's my vision. That's how I have visualized it. Yeah, that was wonderful. This <laughs> really great uh, how you visualize you know metaverse and the consumer journey in the metaverse. Uh, another one would be uh, like multiple metaverse that we may expect in times to come. It's not will be single metaverse. So what will happen to the clutter and the uh, quantity of advertisement that will go up. It's not only about quality, but quantity of ads or quantity of media content that consumer will go now or user will gonna consume. So how much will be the retention and engagement then? Uh, would you like to speak on that? I like that. And I will speak on that. So think about social media. How many social media that do we see every day? So I think sometimes I was trying to look at solar, solar panel. I only clicked on one. The next time I went to my social media, Everybody is telling me, man, I buy solar panel, solar panel. So this is something that we'll have to deal with as we go on there. So, but I guess the point is, is about understanding the consumers and giving them what they really want. So, you know, this is going to be all around you. It's about you giving the consumers what they really want at that particular time. So I recognize if we get on board, we will all be moving around billboards. We will be moving around message. But again, that is the world we live right in. You can imagine how many adverts you've seen today. So this is something that we recognize. But as we have been doing it in the real world, whereby we give consumers 
many adverts, but we try to understand them to see what we type of advert are they engaging with. I'm sure those are the type of knowledge we can be translating the metaverse to say, okay, we give everybody different adverts everywhere. We see what they engage with. And again, that's this idea for personalization. So what you see will be different from what I'm seeing. So this is also a way that brands can use to, and also working with their marketing agency to see everybody's busy in that metaverse. Everybody's just looking around, wandering around, looking around. What can we do to personalize this? What do we know about them? Can we change the adverts that they see? Can we use the image of their, of their friend that, oh, that is my friend on the billboard. Is that something that, can, that we can do to really change the way we, we engage and the way we sort of break those barriers and that media cluster. So I must say, so far, it's still not, it's still, it's still scanty. But if, if we jump on board, just reflect on what happens on social media, that is also what we'll be having there. But ultimately, it's left for brand to see how they can customize and personalize that message, which that opportunity abounds in the better verse. Say, everybody should not be seeing the same advert. You give me the advert that I'm more likely to engage with. That's quite interesting. I mean, uh, I was really fascinated to listen to your answer. Uh, I mean, uh, how personalized it can be, right? Uh, seeing some yes, yes. you know, and uh, you know that'll be quite engaging. Thank you, thank you for answering my questions. But it's time to take questions from the audience. So I would like to invite Professor Anabel to take questions from the audience, please. Uh, stop sharing. Dr. Yes, of course. Thank, thank you, uh, Dr. Kumar. And uh, Dr. Mwejagi, that was a very in, in, interesting presentation. Thank you very much. And I really like this concept about considering the stakeholders. I can't hear you if you hear me. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Yes, uh, I can hear both of you. Uh, okay, okay, so I, I can hear you. Okay, and uh, yes, can you hear me now, Emmanuel? I can hear you now. Yeah, okay, good. So I was telling you about uh, your presentation. It was very fascinating, the, the concept of how to integrate all the stakeholders in order to understand uh, how actually the interactions will be uh, very dynamic and, uh, and evolving in yes. different settings, because that, that's the key issue. You need uh, a volume in order for this metaverse to be interesting for advertising. But I like that we volume. This volume is not there. Yes, yes, nobody will like to be there because nobody is looking. But yeah. that is a, a little bit um, contrary to the large investment that we can see currently on the metaverse. Yeah. So you say, oh, so why is this happening? So it looks like very paradoxical that the investment is huge, but still there is not many people out there in the metaverse. But if we look at uh, what happened with, the, um, with social media, well, is something similar happening here? When social media started, the, the volume started growing huge, hugely, but the advertising came a little bit late. But in the last 10 years, it was just like, goodness me, huge. So I would like to see uh, your views on, uh, I'm, I'm taking uh, audience uh, questions in a second, I promise. That's but fine. these views about how we are proving the return of investment about actually starting from now, Mm, exploring yes. this um, uh, uh, this uh, environment yeah yes thank you i must say um i'm pro metaverse so let me declare that i love metaverse and i want it to succeed because like you said there are a lot of money there are a lot of resources even academics the amount of time we spent in writing papers on metaverse it must survive <laughs> so this is something that we hope it will but I guess I'm I'm taking sort of a uh, a kind of how would I put it, uh, so called, if I can put it like a kind of reassurance that this is something that could work, provided we can sort of manage and uh, sort of uh, manage the the challenge. So think about COVID and and what happened to Zoom. Zoom came and everybody decided to shift on, on online. 
and also think about the, the, the uh, social media, even websites. These are something that often people like, yes, what is going on? Why are you all on this? But as things goes on, there's this anticipation that, yes, it will be fine. People will get on board. But I must say, I, I recognize the skepticism that is surrounding this. And this is also where that concern is around that return of investment. Where brand asking you, Annabelle, why should I go metaverse? This thing will not survive. People will not go on it. But I guess like any other business decision, you want to sort of reflect on it and see, okay, what does the trend say? How is it going? But ultimately, I think is about, I think going with what Vinod was saying about that customer journey, I would say it should be something that brands should have on the horizon. They should have it on their radar, thinking, hmm, let's just monitor, see how this thing is going. Because you don't want to join when it's already gone. You want, and you don't want to join when it's too early. So I guess it's about finding that right time. But ultimately, I will finalize my point on your on that your point around the volume. We need volume on the metaverse to make this work. If the volume is not there, it will not be encouraging for the brand, even for consumers. Why would I go to metaverse when I'm only seeing myself? I'm not seeing others. So while we recognize volume is an issue, that is why we are also doing this research, providing some justifications, discussing about it so that we can raise more awareness about it, break it down for people to see, to really let us know this is something that is feasible, this is something that you can use. So I'm pro metaverse, I want it to work, but I also recognize the challenges, but ultimately it's about us looking forward to the future, planning for it to succeed, saying, okay, with all this investment, this is something that could go on. And I guess we might come back in 2035 or 2033, 10 years time, for us to have a, a conversation again, to actually reflect on how well it has come. But so far, I agree with you, it has not gone the way the investment has gone. So I guess the, the volume is not directly proportional to the amount of investment in trades. But yeah. that is why we're having this conversation and for us to reflect on the positive, on the positive side of it. Absolutely, I agree. We need to really uh, take this opportunity to start shaping the metaverse before the metaverse is actually there, uh, dictated in a way that maybe we don't like to. But before I continue with that conversation, let me take one, uh, one of the questions from our audience. Uh, okay. Suchita is, is asking you, will um, would like to understand how companies are going to target the right perspectives because the issue of uh, related to real and virtual personalities. So I think that's an interesting area, real yes. and virtual personalities. Yes, and and that is also something that uh, that is being recognized by the by the digital marketing uh, by the metaverse marketing agency as sort of justifications for their business to see that, yes, many people will fake their life on the metaverse. So that is something like, that is something we need to know. And it's left for brands to actually sort of measure their own engagement to see if we've been targeting these people, have we been targeting them wrongly? So I guess this is where brands, they want to reflect on their return on investment, on metrics and measurement. So if you've been, so if you've been targeting 30 people on the metaverse, yes, but the engagement has not really aligned with what you expect in terms of your key performance indications. You've not really seen that feedback. Again, that is where you want to reflect on what is going on. But again, this is some of the dark side of metaverse for brand. And that is why many brands will not be willing to go on it. So on the other side, think about social media, where people can fake anything on social media. But again, look at social media in China, whereby you you create it with your own real identity, identity card and all those things. So look at this spectrum. In some extreme case, what I see on social media, it is real. I can track you down to your house. I know that, yes, you have bought my product. But the, the better about the social media we use in the UK, unless you want to get verified, nobody really cares if it is, nobody can really pinpoint it is you. You can use a different picture, use a different persona. Nothing is happening there. 
But then on the metaverse, it's a different ball game entirely, whereby you can actually fake a different persona. But I guess it's left for brand to actually see how are we been engaging, what has been the response to this. So if you've been targeting fake people, if I put it that way, then you will know in terms of the output, in terms of the level of engagement that yes, you've been targeting the wrong people. But this is where the, the expertise of the digit of the metaverse marketing agencies will come in to sort of complement and provide some kind of directions and some kind of, of, of advice on how to go about it. So I guess this also opens that opportunity for brands to work with agencies and also to recognize the dark side that yes, everything you see there, it's not real. But who knows, you could be targeting the right people, but it's about evaluating the response and the engagement. So even you do that on Google Analytics, many people come to your website, that does not mean that, yes, they like your product. It could just be your competitor's bug, clicking, 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 and you think you are, you're having a lot of clicks on your website. So these are some of those dark side on digital marketing that we need to recognize and can also be moved to the metaverse. Yes, that's just my thoughts. Yeah, no, that's very interesting. Actually, there is an, uh, an issue that we are living with the website, with the social media, in mm -hmm. terms of the level of engagement. And the level yes. of engagement is always, it is significant or is not, it is real. And does that, uh, will that translate into purchase behavior? So that is something that is always the, the dilemma here. And yes. it's very related also to some aspects around uh, data protection, legislation, that are yeah. very related to the next question we have from the audience. Um, and it says okay. uh, from uh, Cecilia is asking, um, she is a practitioner and academic that has exp exp a lot of experience in advertising, uh, regulated industries such as alcohol, kids goods. So she's curious about um, how can you, uh, what are your views on anticipating what regulations will be in place to protect wow. that, certain population, especially kids? Hmm. That's, that's a very good, again, I like that that's something practical that we need to recognize because in the real world, you can have your ASA advertising standard authority that can block some adverts, remove it, saying this is offensive. So that means this is something that we need to recognize. So thank you so much for doing that, for raising that question. It's something that we need to think about in the metaverse because so far there is no advertising regulatory uh, organization on the metaverse that tells you you can't put any advert. There's no regulators when it comes to advertising on the metaverse. And thank you so much for that point because it highlights again the dark side of it. Because the point is, how would you control children not coming to the metaverse? Again, would you want to say, oh, many people do this. You have this Aqualic website. They tell you, put in your date of birth before visit our website. Come on, who does that? You can put any hey, just put anything that makes you look like 20. You go onto the website. So there's nothing that really says, oh, uh, with it, perhaps the metaverse, the, the headset will start looking at your, at your eyeballs and looking at your pupil and say, you look like five years old, you should not be coming to this website. Who knows? Maybe that's something that will evolve, whereby the headset we are wearing can look at our face, our high pupil, and actually say, we look five years old. And therefore we tell you, sorry, based on the information I'm getting from the shape of your eyeballs, you look like a five-year-old, you should not be entering this web page. You should not be entering this space. But so far, I've not come to that. And again, this is some of those things to recognize. The dark side is there because it's just like an open space. Again, when we talk about that uh, immersive time, somebody was saying, how about pornography? Again, that is the dark side. Who knows what people will be doing? Yes, I go to the metaverse. I can go and watch anything I want. You can't dictate to me what I should be watching if somebody has put it on the metaverse. So yeah. this is where we need to recognize. I think it also aligns with that regulations to say, how can we protect people on, to go to the metaverse? So I think two things, I will put this on self-regulations. As individuals, let us take responsibility for what we are watching and also as parents. So number one, self-regulations. Number two, as parents, please be mindful of what your children are watching because you can't control 
what people will put on the metaverse. You can't tell people, don't do this, don't do that. People will put anything on the metaverse. Just like we have internet, people put anything on the internet. It's left for ourselves to self-regulate so you can block any content. If anybody's abusing, you block them, remove them, sign out from the website. So if you think something is wrong, right, self-regulate and regulate for your, for your children or, or those who are vulnerable. So, but that's the key point, regulations and checking advertising on the metaverse. Thank you so much for raising that. Thank you. Yeah, no, and absolutely, I agree with you. And this is an evolving thing that we don't know how it's going to um, actually look like. And I'm very fascinated to have this opportunity to start getting this vision and trying to imagine how things are going to be in the future so we can prevent and not have all this mess that we have in social media regarding how we protect um, and all the the dark side of social media has been very clear that we yes. don't we can't control it it's out of the box and that is the same thing that we are gonna see happening with the metaverse if we don't uh, start considering all these challenges in advance for example mm -hmm. you were mentioning this uh, aspect about the uh, emphasis on out of the home, digital out mm -hmm. of the home, which yes. I, I, I really like it because I said, mm, it's interesting. Before traditional media was all out of the house mm -hmm. and then we started moving to digital marketing and the mm -hmm. mix of the media that we were consuming and the yes. planning was towards the digital yes. tv radio start reducing Google still significant there. but yeah. it is still there but now and the billboards oh mm -hmm. now digital billboards and yes. not only digital billboards outside in the physical mm -hmm. world but translating yeah. that into where we are actually living and, mm -hmm. and for many people maybe not uh, something like oh, what is the point of that? But if you take in consideration that since the pandemic, people mm -hmm. are not going to work as much as they were going. <laughs> exactly. So we are reversing the things and we are going to go to the traditional media, but in the metaverse. Yes. Yes. That's a crazy idea, but yes, that's what you were please. coming. So yes. what, what is let your... Me, um... Let me comment on that, please, because again, that brings the brand to your house and also to that immersive space in you. So again, you can't run away from it. Or like, you can't even skip it. Or like your YouTube advert, you can skip. You can say, no, I'm not watching it, but this is right in your face. You either look at it or close your eyes. So that is yeah. something that... I, and, and that's what I wanted to ask you something, because uh, that is, I think, how brands need to start imagining these environments, because mm -hmm. before you you were going to work to, uh, every day, not in, the, in your home, not online, but you were actually going to the office. So you needed a nice car or you needed a nice clothes to wear to go to, the, the, to your work. But nowadays then, you will need something to wear to go to the metaverse. Yes. And then you start I, talking about fashion. So I know you are being developing something around fashion. How do yes, you imagine yes. these aspects about advertising in the fashion industry? And that is why I'm saying it is it, left for brand to actually reflect on can they jump on this bandwagon as much as possible as soon as possible? Because this is something that is very important. How many people will still be buying clothes in the real world where you can actually be more creative and do various things in the metaverse? And also with many brands coming on board, it's left for, for, for fashion brands to see how they can sort of work with different partners and how they can work with different, uh, not, uh, different brands as well in terms of collaboration, because this is actually what people will see when they are dead, yes. They, will, they won't be able to perhaps, they can't uh, smell your perfume, they can't, even your makeup, they might not be able to see it as you want them to see, but your clothes, things they can see, that's what they will, your shoes. So those are some of those things that we need to recognize that yes, things are changing. It's left for brand to actually therefore think about it, okay? I make a t-shirt, 
how do I get on Metaverse and allow people to sort of start wearing my t-shirts? These are some of those things I expect brands to start thinking about. Perhaps on a very small level saying, okay, I don't need to go and open a store in the Metaverse. Can I work with maybe a game developer? Can I work with a small brand to say, I make t-shirts, my t-shirts are very unique. I can, I can get onto Metaverse. But again, there is a lot of things to consider there in terms of even the sustainability comes in. I will reduce the amount of shirt I'm making in the real world. I can be selling that in the, meta, in the Metaverse. So it's left for brand to recognize that here is another world entirely. Are you going to join them or you will just be looking at it, thinking it will pass? How about if this world does not pass? Is Metaverse here to stay? Do we want to start thinking about it or we just want to let it be? So there are many opportunities in fashion, in sports, in gaming, in retailing, in even in tourism. Many people will not be traveling to, to India. Many people will not be traveling to, uh, to Mexico. You just wear your headset, boom, I find myself in India. What will India tourism organization be doing? To say that, wow, people are no longer coming because they can wear the headset and just look around. So there are many implications for the brands and it's important for us to have this conversation and for the practitioners to start reflecting on it. Wow, but how about, how about if this meta world stays? I guess that's the exactly. question. People are thinking it will just go, it's just a flash in the pan, it will go. Okay, let's wait and see. But contrary to what you were saying to, to start quickly investing and try, testing this, I will actually put a little bit of caution for okay. practitioners in terms of yes. we are uh, facing a huge, huge challenge about all these things that you have rightly pointed out about the challenges and if we accelerate this uh, no. we are not going to get it right so actually uh, we are facing these challenges of the convergence between uh, virtual reality augmented reality metaverse artificial mm -hmm. intelligence so everything is just changing so fast and yeah. as we know, regulations don't move that fast. <laughs> <laughs> so we really need to be very cautious about what we are creating. The, the, thank, that thank is you so much. And, and I want to also say that this is why we're having this conversation. Mm -hmm. This is where we are talking about it. At least gradually, we are trying to change the narrative. We are sowing some seeds. Gradually, we are drawing. Okay, when you get to that place of authority, when you get to that decision table, what would you be doing? So thank you so yeah. much for the organizers, the Symbiosis, and also the Swansea, your uh, uh, special interest group that have brought this together. We need to talk about this. We need to educate ourselves. We need to sow the seed. We need to recognize that it is our world to create. Can we start knocking on some doors? Can we start challenging some bad practices? Can we start saying, guys, please? No, 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 we don't want that. We don't want that. Can we start to raise an awareness? So I think it's going to be a, 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 a very important conversation to keep having because it's accelerating so fast. And our guide, which should be our policymakers, are struggling to catch up. But as academics, we keep talking about it. We keep researching it. We keep having seminars about it. We keep sowing this seed. We talk about it and hopefully, all this will converge together and we will create a metaverse that we like. Absolutely. I, I, I agree with you and I really think that that's the core of all these seminars, uh, actually, to start exploring and shaping the metaverse instead of letting the metaverse to shape us. So yes. my final questions, I think we don't have any more from the audience, but I have a yes. final question for you, because you mentioned in one of your uh, responses about the, the sustainability, that you, we will be more sustainable maybe by interacting in these uh, in these environments and I, I would like to challenge your view on that okay. <laughs> in terms of the digital is... power <laughs> exactly 
Gotcha. How on earth you are justifying the amount of energy that is needed to power all these uh, digital okay. environments? <laughs> okay, you, you go. yes, that's fine. We will offset it by not traveling by plane to India. <laughs> I will not travel by plane to India. I will just wear my headset and visit India. I will not travel to New Mexico and just wear my headset. I will reduce my traveling by engaging on the metaverse. So I guess it's about offsetting our CO2 emission. So I'm <laughs> sure we can always strike a balance between that. You got me on that, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really appreciate your views. And, and that yeah. just to, to conclude uh, on, on my yeah. side, I definitely think that uh, exploring the ethical implications yes. of creating this ecosystem that where we are going to start interacting is very important. We need to see the implications from technological perspective and also from social perspective, what that will cause to us as humans to, uh, um, to be immersed in these environments. So I really appreciate uh, uh, your presentation and I would like to ask you one final question in terms of uh, your work that you are doing and what will be the practical advice that you will give to businesses around Thank you. Yeah. Hmm. this For topic? I think I will give advice to businesses and to advertising agencies. For business, if you are in fashion, start thinking about it. Yes, I guess fashion, entertainment, sports, tourism, start thinking about to see how would this affect my business? Because if it doesn't spoil your business, it can make it better. So I think for businesses, start thinking about it, start asking questions, start doing your research, engage with agencies, engage with people to say, what can we do? What are the small steps we can do? I know this world is going so fast, but what are those small steps that we can do? Can we just start by making one dress into a 3D? and have it on this metaverse? Can we partner with roadblocks? Can, our, can these characters be wearing some of our dresses? So for, for brands, I think they need to start thinking about it. Maybe not to jump into it and accelerate and go all full force, but it's important to have it as in their radar, to start thinking about it, what we will we be doing. And secondly, for the advertising agencies, I think it's important for them to start reflecting on their business practices to recognize that there is a new kid on the block. The Metaverse Marketing Agency, those guys could be coming in to shape the business. So I foresee a case whereby the real world advertising agency could be acquiring a, a Metaverse Marketing Agency to bring them in house. So all these big agencies should start thinking about it like, okay, can we start offering a package for our existing clients to think about metaverse? So I guess those are the two key uh, business that I would like to sort of give some recommendation. Brands, especially fashion brand, sports, entertainment, tourism. Think how this metaverse could shape your business. Start asking questions, talking to people. What can we do? What small step can we take to just, let's just test it. Can we do a trial version? Can we just see how this will look like? Then for advertising agencies to watch their back. The, mark, the, the metaverse marketing agencies are coming. They are ready to take business if you are not doing it. So thank you so much again for this time. It's been very interactive. Thanks so much for your questions. Yes, the sustainability one puts me on the spot. Yes, and the, <laughs> and the advertising one puts me on the pedestal. So yes, and Vinod, thank you so much for this platform, for the engagement and for the for the backhand preparation. It's always a pleasure to engage with you. All. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you. So uh, building on to you know what Cecilia asked, brand safety emerged as a challenge to companies, but uh, they found an answer to the same in Metaverse. Also, I think it will not only be the users which will be impact will be impacted, but it will also be the brand and the brand safety will emerge as a challenge to them. I think. Yeah, yeah. Many thanks for taking all the questions very uh, patiently, and thank you for answering them with a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, so we'd like to extend our sincere gratitude uh, to you uh, for gracing the event with your valuable insights during this enlightening session. I also want to express my heartfelt thanks to Professor Yogesh Kumar Devedi, Prof. Dr. Laurie Hughes, 
and uh, Professor Ramakrishnan Raman for conceiving the idea of the seminar series and providing us with this exceptional platform to delve into contemporary theme of emerging perspective on the metaverse. A special thanks to all our esteemed guests who have joined us from various parts of the world, contributing to the enriching discussions today. Lastly, I would like to express my appreciation to Mr. Rajesh and his team for unwavering IT support and ensuring, ensuring the smooth functioning of the event. So link of uh, next seminar is already posted on the chat. Those who are interested can register right away. As we conclude our current gathering, I'm delighted to inform you that uh, the upcoming seminar is just a week away, uh, which is scheduled on 20th of September. Uh, we are honored to have Professor Chu Young Kim from University of Georgia, USA, who will be sharing his valuable insights on, again, metaverse and advertising, a symbiotic relationship. So kindly make note of this date on your calendars. Thank you. Thank you so much once again, uh, Professor Mogaji and uh, uh, Dr. Annabel. Uh, and all the participants, uh, we eagerly anticipate your presence in the next seminar. Wish you all a wonderful time ahead. Thank you. Thank you once again.